Close by the house, the cherries flower above the orchard, beetles hum. Still singing, the girls homeward come. The tired plowman's steps grow slower, and mothers with supper wait at home. Close by the house, they eat their supper. Just then, the evening star appears, as daughter serves. Her mother cares to teach to do things in ways proper. The nightingale's song interferes. Close to the wall on the clay benches, the mother lulls her knell and bill and falls asleep, but the sweet wenches and nightingales are singing still. I felt a very instant connection to that poem because there's so much beauty in it and so much tranquility, and yet there's a tinge of sadness. Um, and, and the more research I did on Shevchenko, I realized, the more I realized that uh, he had more than just a twinge of sadness in his life. <laughs> um, Life is big <laughs> for everyone, and I think it was particularly big for him, having gone through so much. And I think that it is the responsibility of artists to look at the world and, and our hu human existence in its entirety and to understand what it is that we fight for. Um, I think that being an artist is inherently political, um, and I think that, that being able to see beauty in the world is also inherently political. Um, so this is the first poem that came to my mind, which is strange because I don't know if I've ever actually read it for an audience before or shared it anywhere. Um, and I wrote it several years ago, and it goes like this. Allow me to unlearn myself. Allow me to renew. For these are days where poems are born to cleanse the mind of thoughts forlorn like morning dew. Thus shall I quell my loneliness with hazy dreams of lovely things and watch the lilacs sway unscathed, where earth content in light is bathed, and a bird sings. I wrote that piece a few years ago now, on a lovely spring evening, <laughs> like tonight. Um, and I, I was a little confused about, okay, what, what is it about this poem that I wanted to, why did I so dearly want to read it? And I, Realized it was because I was coming out of a, a depression at the time, um, something I've struggled with for my whole life. Uh, lots of anxiety and, and depression. That's part of who I am. And uh, and I found a lot of connections there because I think that the more a human being struggles, the more grateful they are for what is beautiful and good in this world. And I see so much beauty and good in this world. I see so much of it here. Um, so I wanted to further explore the idea of beauty and sadness and, um, and, and just the, the human drive to feel connected to someone and to something bigger than what we are while trying to balance that with the shield that we try to put up. Um, we want to protect ourselves, we want to cling to what is beautiful in the world, but we can't because that means isolating ourselves from all of it, because life is big. Life is really, really big. Uh, so I'll end it with this piece. It's called At the Lake House. She hesitates before coffee's first sip, drinks the smell of it, savors warmth with both hands, watches steam rise to tangle with new air. Daybreak at the light lake house holds a special magic, a certain silence. She wakes with sun and budding poplars daily, synchronizes movements with earth and clean linens, grins at her kettle's impatience. At the lake house, there is only water and light. She can stretch without her body's floorboards creaking, as though bones and muscles have always meant home to her, as though she's never kept the bulk of her clutter above her neck. The lake house has no attic. Visitors don't come by this time of day. They keep their distant sirens to city streets, sometimes between lint and dust and crumpled receipts. They never think of showing up with a cobbler or a casserole on days when their skin is dry. They stay home until both feet carry the same weight. She has cut her fingers on too many shards of promises. They understand now. She is tired of bleeding at the lake house. There is only water and light. She closes her eyes to search the darkness for the answer to 36 across. 
Before she woke, dew settled on the newspaper on her doorstep, washed its ink stains clean away, left only the crossword. That which held the worlds in its pages is now too damp and cool to burn. No echoes of foreign soil crying out, I'm thirsty, surface among the crinkling papers. She hears only gentle birds and other things that grow. She lives for the ripples around her toe and the way they kiss her spine. She thinks more thoughts than words. At the lake house, there is only water and light. The earth wakes with a sour taste in her mouth. At the lake house, there is only water and light. Thunder lurks in corners of every dwelling. At the lake house, there is only water and light. Cardboard words seep into sand and soil. At the lake house, there is only water and light. I'm thirsty, tired of bleeding. I'm thirsty, taste of smoke and ash. At the lake house, everything is too damp and cool to burn. But she can feel the poplars choking. 36 across, thirst. She has forgotten how to breathe. She has forgotten how to drink. At the lake house, 